Yamamoto Tsunitomo was a samurai in early 1700s Japan. And when his master died, he was forbidden by his master's will to conduct ritual seppuku, the suicide of a long-serving retainer on the death of their master. So he retired to a monastery. Now, although he wasn't the kind of samurai that fought in battles, Tsunetomo held dear the rituals and the way of life of a samurai. And over the years, a younger samurai would visit him at the monastery and write down the things that Tsunetomo would say. These statements and aphorisms and sayings became collated in a book called Hagakure. Literally, it means hidden by leaves, but it is known as the way of the samurai. And in this video, I want to share with you some of the things that Tsunetomo said and how we can interpret them as valuable advice for us as modern day project managers. The book Hagakure and some of the sayings from it were popularized in a film called Ghost Dog by Jim Jarmusch. And I want to start with perhaps the best known saying from Hagakure. Best known because it was used in the film. There is something to be learned from a rainstorm. When meeting with a sudden shower, you try not to get wet and run quickly along the road. But doing such things as passing under the eaves of houses, you still get wet. When you are resolved from the beginning, you will not be perplexed, though you will still get the same soaking. What I think this means is that the inevitable will happen. When it's raining, you will get wet. So rather than try to avoid the inevitable, which is impossible, Embrace its necessity with confidence. On our project, we know that risks will happen. We know that stakeholders will resist. Don't try to pretend it won't happen. Don't try to avoid it happening. Plan for it, embrace it, and take it on confidently. And that way, when it happens, you won't be perplexed. You will be able to deal with it confidently and professionally. There are two similar quotes on attitude, which I think are very important and valuable for us as project managers. I'll give them to you and then I'll explain what I think they mean. The first says that there is surely nothing other than the single purpose of the present moment. A man's whole life is a succession of moment after moment. There will be nothing else to do and nothing else to pursue. Live being true to the single purpose of the moment. And the second is to be true to the thought of the moment and avoid distraction. Other than continuing to exert yourself, enter into nothing else, but go to the extent of living single thought by single thought. It seems to me that modern life has caught up with this element of philosophy. You'll also find it, by the way, in Stoic philosophy from the Greek and Roman eras. This is the idea of mindfulness, of paying attention to the moment and not letting yourself be distracted either by the past or by the future. If you focus on what is happening now and give that all of your attention, and all of your concentration, then you can be successful in what you are trying to do. Here's a valuable lesson for us in thinking about stakeholder engagement. To give a person an opinion, one must first judge well whether that person is of the disposition to receive it or not. As project managers, we have our plans for how we're going to communicate with our stakeholders. And if today is Wednesday, it's two o'clock and we've got a meeting with this stakeholder 
then we're going to follow our plan. But that can be foolish. Communication doesn't always follow plans. If someone is not in a mood to hear what you have to say, if they're not ready to hear it because they don't have the background knowledge or the experiences, then when you say it, not only may it not land well, but it can actually entrench their opposition to what you're saying. Think carefully about the timing and judge well whether your stakeholders are ready to receive the message you want to give. And while we're on the topic of communication, here's a saying which resonates very well with me because it's very similar to something I've heard myself saying in the modern day. When one is writing a letter, he should think that the recipient will make it into a hanging scroll. This is rather like the comment that I once made to a colleague. I warned that every project communication that you send out, you should only send it out if you're prepared to see it on the side of a London bus. What this tells us is that communication escapes into the wild. What you think of as a personal, private, confidential message from yourself to another person can escape into the wild. They can tell other people about it. They can show it to other people. It can leak. And if you're not prepared for it to leak, then don't make that communication. If you have to communicate the idea, then do so in person. Any other mechanism can let you down. In fact, communicating in person can let you down too, but sometimes we have to take the chance. There are two quotes that I really like on the topic of professionalism. Here's the first one. If one is but secure at the foundation, he will not be pained by departure from minor details or affairs that are contrary to expectation. This one is simple. Things will happen that you're not expecting. You will need to improvise. You will need to create new ways of doing things. You will need to learn new ideas as your career progresses. But if you have a secure, solid, robust foundation of knowledge of the basics, the fundamentals, the things that make project management really work, then nothing that happens will shake your knowledge, shake your confidence, and shake your professional ability. And here's one that I put in a little bit for fun, because it pokes fun at the kind of person we're all familiar with. In our world, this is the know-it-all project manager who's seen everything, done everything, can take on any challenge. Except underneath all the brag and show, there's not a lot of real experience or substance. In China, there was once a man who liked pictures of dragons, and his clothing and furnishings were all designed accordingly. His deep affection for dragons was brought to the attention of the dragon god, and one day a real dragon appeared before his window. It is said that he died of fright. He was probably a man who always spoke big words, but acted differently when facing the real thing. That leads to another quote on attitude, which picks up this theme and turns it on its head and makes it a practical piece of advice. The extent of one's courage or cowardice cannot be measured in ordinary times. All is revealed when something happens. The measure of a project manager is not how you cope at the start of a simple project. It's how you respond when things get tough in a big, hairy, complex, risky project. And finally, wouldn't it be good if you could be right all the time? Well, in Hagakure, Tsunetomo tells you how. It is said, when you make a mistake, never hesitate to correct it. A wrongdoing can be rectified immediately 
if you are quick to address the problem. It will look worse if you try to cover it up and you will suffer more. Put simply, if you make a mistake, fess up, say you're sorry, and put it right. Things will go wrong on projects. Shift happens. Your job is not to never make mistakes. It's to be alert enough to catch the mistakes and put them right quickly before they damage the project severely, damage the people around the project, and damage you and your personal reputation. It's very popular in business circles to draw lessons from Sun Tzu's The Art of War. But for my money, I much prefer Hagakure, the Book of the Samurai. There's loads of great lessons in it, and it's well worth dipping into if you're interested in Japanese culture. Please give a thumbs up if you like this video. There'll be loads more great project management videos, so please do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of them. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.